Hello friends, let us today study textured vegetable protein. In this lecture, we will discuss what are the textured vegetable proteins, what are different methods for their manufacture as well as their applications, usage and their characteristics, product quality characteristics, these aspects we will study. In the earlier class, we have seen about or we have discussed about protein functionality, the properties of food proteins are altered by environmental conditions, process treatments and the interactions with other ingredients. Processing methods generally heating, freezing, drying, steaming or mixing pressure etcetera. Environmental conditions such as pH, ionic structure, type of salts, moisture content, oxidation reduction potential and so on. All these conditions have important influences on protein structure. So, with the varying conditions of processing methods and environmental conditions, protein structures get changed and this change in the protein structure influences its physical properties, its functional properties and many other factors. Okay. So, this uh, in most of these processes we have seen that is it is the basically heat, pressure, alkali treatments etcetera are involved and these factors result into the denaturation of the proteins and this denaturation process modifies the structure and texture of the protein. The recent developments in the technology have made it possible to mimic meat in the form of plant proteins with diverse taste and textural qualities. A combination of heat generally above 60 degree Celsius, pressure, pH and ionic strength is used to solubilize and denature food proteins. Under these conditions, proteins re arrange themselves into 3 D gel structures and which give the characteristics of meat, meat like texture and other properties. So, this process we call texturization that is the texturization of plant protein has been really a very, very significant development in the food processing industry. Processes have been developed which impart a fibrous structure to amorphous defatted plant protein floors. In fact, defatted plant protein floors are important byproducts of the vegetable oil milling industries. And the major impediments to the direct use of these plant protein floors have been their lack of meat like texture flavor and appearance. So, once using the appropriate processing technology or manufacturing technology which we will study little later in next slides, there is the plant proteins after they have been texturized and rehydrated, it has found extensive use as an extender of fresh and processed meat product and as the meat like ingredients in many ready to eat or ready to cook processed food items. The texture vegetable proteins are generally accordingly those protein rich items which have been modified in structure, shape, texture, flavor and appearance to simulate the conventional food items such as meat. So, ideally the TVP should show a marked degree of structure or 
fiber characteristics of the muscle meat. That is requirements are straightforward here. There is after the texturization, the product which is obtained, it should be uh, giving the properties of the meat. That is, it should have a structure or fiber characteristics similar to that of the meat. It should absorb water and fat appropriately so that they have the composition similar to meat and more importantly it should retain their integrity through the heating and flow processes which exist in the food processing industries. That is these materials that is textured proteins that is during cooking process, during handling process even under pressure cooking etcetera they should retain their structure they should retain their integrity and in fact nowadays throughout the world more and more people not just as vegetarians they are more and more people are preferring alternative proteins in the form of TBP textured vegetable protein. In fact textured vegetable proteins are also known as sometimes vegetable meat and these become very good products for the vegetarian people or other people who wants to enjoy the texture of the animal protein or meat like from the vegetable sources. So, this TVP offer important potentials. Depending upon the characteristics of the TBP produced using different uh, process variables, these products can be categorized or generally available in the market in two forms. One is the meat extenders and other is meat analogs. The meat extenders are the TBPs used as meat extenders are produced by a process having a single high temperature or pressure extrusion system. The product shows a distinct fiber formation and has a highly expanded character. Once these TBPs are hydrated, they can be used to extend ground meat or meat products. Means that in different food preparations, they can be used to that is they can be used to replace the natural meat or as an ingredient etcetera. These TBPs have found extensive use in prepared foods such as meat sauces and different fabricated food formulations. The other category of the TBP as I told you is the meat analogs that is these products they are actually used in place of meat in routine cooking operations or uh, general cooking purpose. So, here in these type of products the requirement is very straight that is it must be dense their density normally is up to 0 0.4 to 0.6 gram per cc and they should be devoid of air pockets. They should have a layered fiber conformation and should be able to maintain a meat like character after extensive cooking or retarding. So, they should resemble in every aspect to a meat like products. They must give texture, appearance and mouth feel of the red meat. The manufacture of meat analogs require the use of multiple extrusion processes or especially cooled dyes. So, let us see the what are the different texturization processes or methods which are used to prepare one or the other types of TBPs that is the textured vegetable proteins. Okay. So, generally there are two types of processes are two categories of products which are used. They are that is in one approach that is 
the different materials or processes are used to assemble a homogeneous structure comprising a certain amount of protein fibers within a matrix of binding material. That is this approach is the fiber spinning technology. That is in this process the fibers are produced by a spinning process which is similar to the one used for the production of synthetic fibers for the textile industry. In the second approach the vegetable proteins are converted into a hydratable laminar CV mass where they, are, they are, do not have they do not have fibers that is without true fiber, but they have the characteristics of the meat or meat like products. So, in the second approach there are two uh, methods which can be used like steam texturization and extrusion texturization. So, you can say basically there is a fiber spinning steam texturization in the steam texturization there is another method press texturization can also be used and finally, the extrusion texturization process these are the different methods which can be used for texturization of plant proteins. So, let us take one by one these methods and number one the fiber spinning technology as I told you in the fiber spinning technology there is here a relatively pure vegetable protein that is important in the other processes that is the agricultural materials containing the protein etcetera they are used as a raw material, but in the fiber spinning technology generally a relatively pure vegetable protein which is called spinning dough is pumped through a spinner. This spinner contains thousands of tiny holes may be of 75 micron or other. Okay. And when it is forced through these spinners, it comes into the form of its minor threads, and these threads are allowed to pass into acid coagulation bath, that is where these proteins get coagulated. So, the bundles of fiber produced in this manner are stretched, washed colored, flavored and bound into aggregates to produce a simulated meat like item. The fiber bundles produced as above are passed through a special type of heated farming extruder, where they are aligned, compressed and bound onto a chunk like mass, which have the properties analogous to meat. After formation the spun fibers are cut into convenient length mixed and impregnated with fat and other heat colloable binders like albumin etcetera. This spin fiber technology or fiber spinning technology produces a comparatively high quality meat analog, because here vegetable protein pure generally pure vegetable protein is used as a raw material, but the cost factors it is little are comparatively highly cost costly process, because even the extraction of protein or purification of the protein itself involves certain cost and then that is the low yield and disposal of the waste streams like uh, acid coagulation bath and other chemical extraction etcetera it generated la, generates a lot of waste streams. So, these disposal of the waste these are the some of the drawbacks of this technology otherwise it becomes a very very good process for manufacture of good quality protein products. So, in this picture or diagram it is a schematic 
representation of the spun fiber based protein texturization process. You can see here in the first part in the top part actually this section it involves basically the preparation of the protein that is extraction of the protein using appropriate methods that is protein solubilization and its extraction and then this proteins which are obtained it is aged and made into a viscous that is the viscosity of this when it approaches to that of the honey that is it becomes a honey like material and which generally called a that uh, dope. So, this now protein dope solution of the protein dope is you can see here it is expert uh, spinach in this section. So, the material is coming through this and it is passed through the stinners, spinners and in this spinners that is here these are the these holes tiny holes tiny holes are present in this spinners and then this is the coagulation bath where the acid work is coming salt is put into that. So, this uh, uh, alkaline protein solution now actually pass through the spinner from where it comes in the form of thread it falls into the coagulation bath which is acidic in nature. So, obviously that protein gets coagulated and it comes in the form of fibers. Then it is passed through different rolls that is it is sent to the washing section for removing any adhering acid etcetera or salt etcetera excessive salts. Then it is passed through the stretching section it is stretched where that this diameter of the fibers is further reduced even less than that of the opening of the spinach hole. Then it is passed through the another wet where where the various binders etcetera as I told you that is even colors, flavors that things are added. Even that is a heat coagulable winders uh, like uh, egg albumin etcetera it is passed and then sent through again the ro rollers that is that is a flavor, color, stabilizer, supplementary nutrients etcetera passed. Then finally, it is you get to the different types of that is it is cut to the appropriate size and that things and we get different types of fabricated meat like products which you can see here. So, this is the process how that is it can be applied in commercial ER it give you the schematic representation. So, in this next two three slides I have just again used that is for your convenience explained the same thing again. So, you can read through it and get acquainted with the process I have already explained it that is thing is that the solution the protein solution which contains approximately 20 percent protein its pH is around 12 to 13 all right that is it is aged and I told you that is once is consistently reaches to that of the or viscosity reaches to that of the honey that is around 50,000 to 100,000 centipoise then it is passed through the that is this called rope and spinach and spinach has the holes of about 20 75 microns and then again the rest thing is then in this slide also the same process is explained. So, I will move. So, the next step is the steam texturization this this process involves texturizing vegetable protein by thermal coagulation coupled with some form of shear induced orientation to provide a fiber like structure. The heating of protein particles in a steam environment and rapid release of the pressure result in the expansion and texturization of protein. In one of these processes like steam texturization processes which has been patented by some researchers the moistened soya floor is uh, fed continuously into a pressurized reactor where it meets high pressure steam at around 7 to 8 atmosphere 
and the thick mass then flows under the action of the pressure through a cylindrical barrel okay and the discharge end of the barrel opens in the atmosphere similar to the steam texturization and that is the press texturization where there is a heated press or gun like material heated gun where inside it is a vessel where inside you can have there is the pressure and temperature etc assembly, assembly and the, it is provided with an assembly to release this pressure suddenly so the press is heated to a temperature of around 150 degrees celsius and whole soya bean or whole soya flour is added into the press the mass is uh, taken at a 40% moisture content it is heated for about 5 second at a pressure of about 25 atmosphere and when the pressure is suddenly opened by trigger mechanism the material expands quickly flashing up some of the moisture which yields a texturized expanded patty and this press texturization particularly is suitable for texturizing full fat soya flour other next process which is mostly used by the industry for the preparation of textured vegetable protein products is the extrusion texturization although there is a potential of being used a wide variety of plant proteins in this process that is the like uh, that is a groundnut uh, defeated groundnut protein defeated sunflower protein or other proteins system defeated system protein etc they can be potentially used for the texturization purposes but at present there is the soya flour is used more commonly so the it is the defeated soya flour as i told you earlier that is the which is obtained after the extraction of the oil from the oil mill so defeated soya flour okay containing a certain amount of water is passed through a high pressure extruder cooker to produce expanded porous and somewhat or oriented structure and for being proper texturization for giving the proper or obtaining the proper characteristics desired characteristics in the textured product the defeated soya flour should have a minimum 50% protein a maximum 3% fiber less than 1% fat and a nsi or pdi nitrogen solubility index or protein dispersibility index of around 50 to 70 although these uh, products which result from the extrusion process they are devoid of true fibers but they possess the textural characteristics uh, particularly chewiness elasticity elasticity etc to that of the normal meat and natural meat so here in this figure we have shown you the process that is how the protein texturization takes place during the extrusion process this in earlier when we were discussing the protein chapter also this was briefly discussed again in this like when during extrusion process the protein undergoes several conformational changes like depending upon the processing conditions like uh, shearing action heating pressing etc there may be uh, unfolding of the natural structure natural or secondary tertiary or quaternary structure or conformation of the protein there may be there is these may get reassociated that is the unfolding of the molecular chain association aggregation or even cross linking with potential degradation of oxidation etc so there may be a degradation reaggregation so all these processes may take place and which actually give finally the desired textural and other characteristics and in fact by varying the extruder system conditions extruder process parameters another 
कंडीशन मटेरियल कंडीशंस लाइक स्टूडर प्रोसेस पैरामीटर सिस्टम पैरामीटर एल बाई डी रेसियो एक्सेट्रा और स्पेसिफिक मैकेनिकल एनर्जी एक्सेट्रा वी कैन ऑप्टेन ए वराइटी ऑफ प्रोडक्ट्स टेक्सचर वेजिटेबल प्रोडक्ट्स विद वराइटी ऑफ करेक्टरिस्टिक्स आर आर वेरिंग इन इट्स करेक्टरिस्टिक्स एंड अदर थिंग्स लाइक देर इज द डेंसिटी कैन बी ऑप्टेन फ्राम इवन फ्राम वन पॉइंट टू फ्राम पॉइंट टू टू दैट ऑफ द पॉइंट वन पॉइंट टू आर सो या मोर देन दैट सो वाइड रेंजिंग द प्रोडक्ट वाइड रेंजिंग हैविंग इन देयर डेंसिटी एंड अदर करेक्टरिस्टिक्स कैन बी फॉर्म सो एज फार एज द एक्सट्रूजन टेक्सचराइजेशन टेक्नोलॉजी इज कंसर्न द डिफेटेड सोया फ्लोर एंड ग्रिड्स आर कंडीशनड अप्रॉक्सीमेटली टू ट्वेंटी टू फोर्टी परसेंट मॉइस्चर एंड द पी एच इज एडजस्टेड बिटवीन सिक्स पॉइंट फाइव एंड टू सेवन पॉइंट फाइव using appropriate acidic or base salts and that is very important that is ph if ph is less than 5.5 the extrusion process will be quite difficult and the product will be tough if the ph is more than 8.5 8.5 the product will be more tender less chewy and absorb more water so the, even this uh, alkaline taste may also be introduced into the product the product may taste little bitter because of the high alkalinity in the raw material so these uh, while these uh, floors or grids are conditioned and ph adjusted they are being heated all right to around 60 to 90 degree celsius and this is basically to reduce their stickiness to aid in the feeding process to improve hydration of the mix and generally for this purpose a pre conditioner right in consisting of a pedal blender is used and which provides the desired mixing and residence time at this stage even several additives like colors flavors minerals emulsifiers cross linking enhancers like elemental sulfur etc may be used to improve the product characteristics okay so now the next step is that after this preconditioning these preconditioned floor is fed into the extruder and picked up by the screw barrel in the earlier classes we have discussed in detail about the extruders and extrusion technology so you know how the material moves inside the extruder so there is the material is fed taken up by the screw side the barrel and it moves forward as it advances forward in the barrel it is rapidly heated by the action of the friction as well as energy supplied by the heating elements around the barrel and the pressure normally 20 to 60 atmosphere attained through the compression mechanism okay and it permits the heating of the material to around 150 to 200 degree celsius means that is when the material comes towards the die in it has a high pressure and high temperature and under this condition it is very flexible right it also that is the residence time at this elevated temperature in the extruder can vary from 20 to 60 seconds depending upon the material characteristics as well as the characteristics desired in the end products the directional shear forces cause some alignment of the high molecular weight components whereas the proteins undergo extensive heat denaturation and when it comes out of the extruder out of the die because of the sudden release of the pressure there is a instant vaporization of some of the moisture and which gives a porous and laminar texturized structure okay the material is flexible enough to take the shape of the die another okay so based on the moisture content of the textured vegetable protein that is produced okay they obtained after the extrusion process they can be of two categories one is the low moisture textured vegetable protein the other may be a high moisture tvp the low moisture tvp contains generally 20 to 40% moisture shorter 
dye is used and temperature usually higher than 160 degree Celsius. Where the high moisture TBPs contain more than 40 percent moisture, larger cooling dye, relatively low temperature, lower than 75 degree Celsius, and possesses a texture similar to animal meat with a rich fibrous structure, dense structure, strong elasticity and high moisture content that is the product characteristics. And in the picture here you can see what are the and how they look like. Okay. And in this figure I have just tried to give you that characteristics of different soya products textured soya product okay what are they they look like like when the floor is used as a raw material when concentrate is used as a raw material or isolate is used as a raw material how the flavor stability and flatulence form shape cast and other factor other characteristics of the product varies so you can read it from the table and understand different types of texture vegetable products which are available in the global market include high protein snacks, chunks style TVP, structured meat analogs, fibrous vegetable proteins, high moisture meat analogs, low moisture meat analogs, texture meat proteins and so on. And in this figure you can see the different types of different products available in the market, how they, that is they may be chunks type, they may be granular, different bigger granules, that is larger thread like material, the seat like material and so on. So, these textured vegetable proteins like high moisture texture snacks, high moisture meat and log or chunks and mixed style of meat extenders and meat and log, they are all produced by bearing the material characteristics, processing parameters and other factors like system parameters or even by varying the processing methods like other spin fiber spinning technology or by student technology etc. That and they are in fact there is the such products prepared from the soybean proteins are available in the market globally and they are being in fact extensively used by the consumers particularly the consumers which who want to enjoy the benefits of the or enjoy the taste and flavor of the meat like okay, these products offer promise. And one more important because these vegetable proteins that is the where particularly where the ingredients etcetera that is flour is used for this purposes. They also have some natural bioactive components etcetera or other health ingredients. So, they come in the depending upon the process parameters, they also get transferred into the textured product and so these products sometimes at times become more healthy alternatives. With this I thank you for your patience hearing and I hope you have got a good understanding of uh, this novel products of that is a vast potential that is commercial or industrialization potential. In fact, if the in addition to the soya flour, if other protein flours that is the like ground nuts, peanuts, sesame, sunflower etcetera, if they are used and processes are developed for their texturization. In fact, it will be really a very, very important addition. It will improve the conditions or even economics of the oil milling industry and obviously, the benefit will be both to the consumers as well as to the industry. Thank you.